magic of being a child. Um, and, and it really, Miyazaki's his message is that the world can be very magical if you respect the natural order and if you truly believe. So in a way, it kind of folds in a little Peter Pan there, too. <laughs> Nature's at the heart of this world, like many of the other of Miyazaki's stories. Um, there are indications of the indigenous Shinto religion throughout the film. Um, that in this scene, May gets lost as she tries to go find her mother, see her mother in the hospital. And we see her seated as it's getting dark next to a series of what every Japanese child would know are guardian figures, protectors of children. So in a kind of scary part of the movie, Every Japanese child's going to know, oh, she's going to be okay because the gods are looking after her. We see a lot of Shinto shrines. We see the Tori Gate in several places. <clears throat> we see the camphor tree, which plays an important role in this film, with its cord of rice paper. And in one scene, the father takes the children out to introduce them to the camphor tree. And and they pay homage to, to that as well. Um, this is a comfortable world where man is living in harmony with nature. <coughs> but there are supernatural things going on as well. One of the first glimpses we get of the supernatural aspect is when they're opening up their new house. And we, become, we get exposed to the soot sprites, my personal favorite characters. These little black, fuzzy puffs of smoke who inhabit uninhabited houses. And there's a real cute scene where May slaps one and gets soot on her hand. Soot sprites show up in Spirited Away, too, in a, in a scene. Um, these tiny little puffballs really symbolize the girl's um, anxiety at a new being in a new place and with not knowing what's going to happen with their mother. Their father, instead of poo pooing their feelings, is very supportive. He think, he talks to them about the magic and the wonder of things like soot spray. As a result, they fall into a fairly comfortable routine. The professor goes to work or works in his study. The older sister goes off to school, and May is at home playing. It's here that she starts to encounter some really special supernatural creatures, Totoro's. The Totoro, who looks like he's Part rabbit, part owl, maybe a little bit of part panda and cat thrown in, <laughs> who's only visible to children or to those and those who truly believe in magic. <clears throat> There's a really cute scene where May first encounters the Totoro, the little white Totoro who thinks he's invisible, but he becomes visible and she sees him, and she giggles, and then medium Totoro is dropping his acorns out of his bag. So she follows them through a thicket and falls down a hole in the roots of the camper tree, where she meets giant Totoro. Um, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is she falls down and lands on him, He's snoring and he wakes up and he roars at her and she laughs back and she roars back at him. <laughs> she, she settles down on his big fluffy belly and they both have a nap. Eventually she wakes up and she's just in the forest and her sister finds, him, finds her. They go back home and tell her father, who doesn't say, oh, you're imagining it. Instead he encourages her, tells her what it is special experience she had. In another charming scene, um, 